This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. If you click on the link in the description below, it'll take you to their store and they'll know I sent you there. Hello everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it's Wednesday, so that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. This time around, we're looking at a creature type that we don't see all that often, but when we do, it shows up on some pretty splashy creatures, and that's Elder. It's a creature type that made its debut way back in Legends when it appeared on the Elder Dragons, but it was a while before we ever saw it again. But we've been seeing it periodically ever since Tarkir block where we got some new Elder Dragons. For a creature to get the Elder creature type, it tends to be some type of being that has lived for a super long time and those tend to be very powerful in the Magic Multiverse. That's why we have never seen the Elder type at any rarity other than rare or mythic rare. It doesn't even appear as the sole creature type of a creature, instead appearing alongside some other type. So far we've had Elder Dragons, Dinosaurs, Demons, and Giants. Of the 24 Elders that have been printed, 12 have at least one premiere event top 8, and if we cut out the original 5 Elders, none of whom have any points, and look at the Elders since 2014, 12 of the 19 we have seen have at least one premiere event top 8. Basically, this is one of the strongest creature types in the game, and if you see Elder on the type line, there's a good chance the card has done some work at Magic's highest level of competition. Alright, before we get into the list, here's a quick reminder of how I score cards in these videos. A top 8 at a Pro Tour, Players Tour, Mythic Invitational, Legacy Championship, or Vintage Championship is worth 2 points, while a Grand Prix or Magic Fest top 8 is worth 1 point. Alright, let's get to the list. At number 10, it is Galta, Primal Hunger, an Elder Dinosaur. We got a cycle of monocolored Elder Dinosaurs in Rivals of Ixalan, and obviously, Galta is the green one. Galta is a huge creature, who likes other huge creatures, since Galta's casting cost decreases, the more power your creatures in play have. If you curve out with some high power creatures, it isn't impossible for Galta to come down on turn 4, and that's pretty scary. It has two Grand Prix top 8s from its time in Standard, one in a mono green aggro deck, and the other in a gruel aggro deck. Both of these decks featured creatures with high power for their mana costs like Crawl Harpooner and Steel Leaf Champion that could enable a very early Galta. Galta hasn't gained any points outside of Standard yet, but it is being played in Pioneer, so it probably has some chance of moving up this list. At number 9, it is Nico Bolas, the Ravager, who is part of a cycle of Elder Dragons from Core Set 2019. This cycle was entirely made up of new versions of the original Elder Dragons from Legends. Nico Bolas, the Ravager, is the only one from the group that is a double-faced card. This side of the double-faced Nico Bolas from Core Set 2019 depicts Bolas before he was a Planeswalker and just an Elder Dragon. Just the front of the card is a pretty nice one, since he gives you a serious flying threat who also makes the opponent discard a card. That means you usually will be getting a 2 for 1 out of him no matter what. Transforming him costs a lot of mana, but once he becomes Nico Bolas the Arisen, he is pretty incredible. He can draw you a bunch of cards, do 10 damage to a creature or planeswalker or reanimate something, and he has an ultimate that will win you the game in 2 turns in most cases. And number 8 it is Chromium the Mutable. An Elder Dragon that is part of the exact same cycle as Nico Bolas the Ravager. They actually have an identical score of 5, which they obtained from 5 Grand Prix Top 8s, but I gave Chromium the edge because it was featured in one deck to win a Grand Prix, while Bolas was not featured in any Grand Prix winning decks. Chromium, like most Elders, has a whole bunch of powerful text. It's a 7 mana 7 7 with flash and flying, which is big enough to flash in and ambush your opponent's attacking creatures while also representing a ton of damage in the air. What really makes Chromium awesome though is that you can give it Hexproof by discarding a card. Now, Chromium does shrink down to a 1-1 with no abilities when that happens, but still, that's actually a pretty nice way of designing Hexproof that isn't quite as frustrating to play against as some are, and it also references the fact that lore-wise, Chromium is a shapeshifter who often takes on human form. Chromium is an awesome win condition for Esper control decks. Having flash means you never have to let your opponent have a turn where you don't have mana up, and it has the size and durability to represent a fast death for your opponent. Unsurprisingly, that's where it was played in standard, Esper control decks. At number 7 it is Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, one of two Elder Giants to appear in Theros Beyond Death. In the early part of the game, Kroxa is a 2 mana discard spell that damages your opponent if they don't discard it on land, and in the later part of the game, he can escape out of your graveyard with a huge 6-6 body that triggers the discard effect not only when it enters, 
but also when it attacks. In standard, Kroxa has been played in Rakdos Sacrifice decks, which can actually get some extra value out of his Sacrifice trigger with cards like Mayhem Devil. It has also found success in historic Rakdos decks, which have a very strong graveyard theme and run things like Stitcher's Supplier to easily load up the graveyard, making it no problem at all for Kroxa to escape. It seems likely that Kroxa will continue to gain points in multiple formats going forward. At number 6, it is Nezahal, the blue elder dinosaur from Rivals of Ixalan. Nezahal has all the traits you want for a control deck win condition, especially against other control decks. He's huge, he can generate card advantage for you, he's uncounterable, and he can protect himself with that flicker effect. Discarding three cards is kind of a steep cost, but the fact that Nezahal draws you cards every time your opponent plays a non-creature spell means you'll probably have some extra cards to discard anyway. And that makes it very hard for your opponent to ever come out ahead after you play this scary sea dinosaur. Nezahal was primarily a sideboard card in standard, one which could be brought in in control deck matches against the mirror. Being uncounterable and difficult to kill is bad news for control decks. At number 5, it is Dragon Lord Dramoka, part of a cycle of ally colored elder dragons from Dragons of Tarkir. Dramoka boasts impressive stats and keywords as a 6 mana 5 7 with flying and lifelink but that probably wouldn't be enough for it to see a bunch of play. Instead, it is the control deck hosing aspect of Dramoka that pushes her into powerful territory. She can't be countered, and she makes it so your opponent's other counters are useless, while also considerably powering down all of their other instants since they can't be cast on your turn anymore. Dramoka was also played in Vintage from 2015 to 2016, where she was featured in some versions of Oath of Druids decks, which would search up the dragon in situations where they thought their opponent might be able to disrupt what they were doing. In general, there are a ton of powerful instants in Vintage, meaning that Dramoka hoses a big chunk of cards in the format. Despite having some brief success in Magic's most powerful format, Dramoka doesn't have any points since 2016. At number 4, it is Dragon Lord Atarka, the largest of the dragons of Tarkir, Elder Dragons, as an 8-8 with Flying and Trample. Atarka also has a powerful Into the Battlefield ability that lets you do 5 damage divided as you choose among your opponent's creatures and planeswalkers. Those types of effects are always great because of their flexibility. She can take down a few small creatures, a creature in a planeswalker, or a single big creature, or a planeswalker with high loyalty. If you're paying 7 mana for something, you're kind of hoping that it has an immediate impact on the game, and at least make sure you get a 2 for 1, even if it dies right away, and Atarka definitely does that. Atarka's 7 mana price tag is pretty steep, but for much of her time in standard, she was one of the best things to ramp into. Early on in her time in the format, ramping into Atarka usually involved Nykthos, and after that rotated, more traditional green ramp decks sought to get her into play early. While most of her points came in standard, she also has a Pro Tour Top 8 from a modern event, where she was featured in the sideboard of a Scapeshift deck, and one Legacy Championship Top 8, where she appeared in the sideboard of an Elf deck. At number 3, it is Dragon Lord Ojutai, our third consecutive Tarkir Elder Dragon. Ojutai brings the usual impressive stats and a powerful combat damage trigger that lets you draw the best card of the top three cards in your library. The fact Ojutai is hexproof as long as it remains untapped is no joke either, as it makes it very difficult to deal with before it draws its controller at least one card. Ojutai is a great card for control decks, since it can represent a four turn clock for your opponent, while allowing you to draw into more cards that can help you protect Ojutai or get your opponent's creatures out of the way. Ojutai was mostly played in various control decks in Standard, including those with the Dragon sub-theme, as well as more traditional Esper and Jeskai control decks. Ojutai also has a single point from a modern blue-white control deck. At number 2, it is Dragon Lord Silumgar, the fourth and final Dragons of Tarkir Elder Dragon to make the list. Silumgar is the least efficient of these Elder Dragons in terms of stats, but that hardly matters, because it has an incredible Enter the Battlefield ability, which lets you steal an opposing creature or planeswalker. Mind control effects are among the most powerful things you can do in all of Magic, as it is effectively a removal spell that gives you a copy of your opponent's creature. And since you're already playing a 6 mana 3 5 flying death touch, you're usually going to end up with way more than 6 mana worth of value when you play this, as Silumgar utterly reshapes the board in your favor. In addition to just being a powerful card on the face of it, Silumgar got an extra boost and the standard of the time thanks to Gideon, ally of Zendikar. Gideon was one of the most played cards in the format, and he was virtually always just using his zero loyalty ability to spit out knight tokens. With Silumgar, you could steal Gideon and use his ultimate right away, so that your board gets a permanent boost, and your opponent won't be getting their Gideon back, even if Silumgar dies. Silumgar was pretty close to a staple in mid-range and control decks playing both blue and black while it wasn't standard. 
And at number one, it is Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, which, despite only being printed in 2020, is the Elder that has the most points with over double the points of Dragon Lord Silumgar. Uro is the other Elder Giant from Theros Beyond Death alongside Kroxa, which we saw earlier. Earlier in the game, Uro is effectively a 3-mana spell that gains you 3 life and lets you explore. Not a bad deal if you're looking to ramp, especially because it's going to help you make it to the later part of the game because you're gaining life. Then, like Kroxa, in the later part of the game, Uro can escape from the graveyard and start doing that every single time you attack, too. So, uh, yeah, Uro has a ton of power, and as a result, it has had a large impact on several different formats. In Standard, it was utterly dominant, showing up in the two top decks of the format, which were Bant and Sultai Ramp decks. It was the most played non-land card at several different Standard events in the last year, contributing to its huge score that came only in a matter of months. Ultimately, Uro finally got banned in Standard just a few weeks ago, but it was only after it had been a problem in the format for way too long. Despite that ban, it is going to continue to amass points in other formats. In Pioneer, it's been played in both Niv-Mizzet and Sultai Delirium decks. In Historic, it has gained points in Sultai Control and Bant Ramp decks. While it doesn't currently have any points in Modern or Legacy, rest assured it is seeing play in those formats. They just haven't had a whole lot of events since Uro was printed as a result of the ongoing pandemic. I think Uro will stay on this list in the foreseeable future, but who knows what crazy stuff the next Elder they print will do. Well, those are the top 10 creatures with the Elder creature type in Magic. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future MTG Top 10s, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you have some time to kill, I'd recommend checking out my MTG Top 10 playlist, which has over 300 videos. Thanks for watching.